Transformers was such a bizarre movie that I had to take a couple days before reviewing it, and what I came up with was... Before I jump in, I just wanted to say thank you for the 500 views on my last video, and I always appreciate comments. So at the end, please share your thoughts, so let's get back into it. Transformers Rise of the Beast came out one week after Across the Spider-Verse, so maybe my palette for good movies just needed to be cleansed before watching this. But after watching other reviews, I was thinking, are people getting paid off? These are some of my favorite reviewers, and it just, it's not adding up. Usually my views align. So, I'll just start with the elephant in the room. Did this movie do something different with humans than in other Transformer movies? Yes. Does that make it better? No. However, I will give props to Anthony Ramos because he did have some good parts. He made me laugh a couple times, but there were too many times that I just couldn't let it slide. And with that out the way, I will start with this. Can Hollywood please stop adding child actors into the mix in order for us to root for the protagonist or, you know, get kids to relate or whatever reason they're doing it? I'm not blaming the child actor because the parents are just trying to exploit them. I mean, get the bag. But that doesn't excuse the horrendous writing of almost every kid in any recent superhero slash action film. Think about the kid from Black Adam. Every time that kid was on screen, on <laughs> see, I'm getting so pissed off that I'm saying words wrong. But every time that kid was on screen, it pissed me off so bad that I wanted to waste my hard-earned. I want my money. If I can't get money, nobody's getting their money. Fifteen dollars and fifty cents plus two dollars for parking and walk out. I mean, a major complaint for these movies is that humans get more screen time than they really need. So why add a kid into the mix when you have consistently proven that all you know how to do is write remarkably corny kid archetypes? So please, just stop. Okay, I got a little heated, but I will give it to them. The couple in front of me did laugh whenever that kid in this movie was on screen, but they looked like parents. Okay, and that's like, that's like when I laugh at my cat when she's just sitting there and I think it's funny and cute because I like cats. But if I took that video and showed her to one of my friends. Oh, oh wait, I, I forgot I, do, I don't, I don't have friends. Actually, I haven't been outside since, since high school. Other than to watch Across the Spider-Verse in, in this movie, of course. But I've ranted about this kid for far too long. And mostly because I'm still pissed off about what they did to Black Adam. I I'm not even going to lie. I'm convinced that that movie would have gotten at least, at least 10% higher on Rotten Tomatoes if they just cut out all the kids' scenes. Not just the kid, actually... The mom, too. Just give us Black Adam. Because whenever he was on screen, and, you know, whenever the Justice Society was on screen, that movie was dope. Plus, I just want to see The Rock win. And the amount of slander that came out against him since that movie came out is appalling. Some of y'all are just haters. Oh, God. Okay, back to Transformers. And don't think I forgot about you. Dominique Fishbeck, while I'm sure you have some great performances elsewhere, this just was not it. Okay, Dominique, she was the main supporting character among the humans, and she was supposed to be like a nerd, smart, genius type character, and I just was not having any of it. She came off more like me, trying to sound smart. Okay, okay, I'm done for real ranting about how much I didn't like the humans, and I'll start talking about how freaking epic the Transformers- Oh, you thought I wasn't gonna talk about when Anthony Ramos stole Iron Man's whole flow? So Mirage is like the main Transformer that we follow because he's the guy that sticks with our main character, Anthony Ramos. Now in the middle of the movie, Mirage gives Anthony a piece of himself, and it morphs onto Anthony's hand, and it turns into like, 
the gamer gauntlet that Mordecai and Rigby got in regular show. And I think they do this to set up what happens later so it doesn't seem like a complete, you know, butt pull. But near the end of the movie, when the writers had to give the humans some random bull crap to do, Mirage ends up taking some big shots. Pause. I mean, he gets completely pieced up. But when all hope seems lost for Pete Davidson, the voice of Mirage, he looked at Anthony and he said, you gotta take over. And I was actually hyped. I thought Anthony was gonna control him like a giant Gundam mech suit. But then Mirage's parts started getting smaller. And they wrapped around Anthony like when Iron Man had the suitcase armor. And I said, wait a minute. Please. Please, please do not do this please. to me right now. No! <laughs> they did that. They gave him iron fart armor. Now you might be like, but I, Iron Man isn't the only person who can have robot tech armor. And to that, I'd say, sure, that is true. But why did he have to hit this exact pose? And I know studio execs are grasping and they think that the audience will automatically love any reference to other popular IP because at the end, they had the audacity to show some guy from G.I. Joe and pause for audience cheers like we gave a crap. Right? Yes, you heard me right. They are doing a Transformer G.I. Joe connected universe because they thought that that would be their Andrew and Toby moment. Yes, my voice just cracked because I'm so pissed. Okay. <sighs> I need to calm down. My blood pressure is rising. So I need to talk about what I actually did like, because despite all of the crap I just talked, I did actually enjoy the movie to some extent. The design of these Transformers was really sick. I'll give them that. It kind of looked like the old Transformers that I have. Maybe I'll put one up on screen. But I did like the colors that they gave them. And this time around, I could actually clearly distinguish each Transformer from one another from one another, come on Ty, during the fights. And the voice acting was top notch. And the fights were dope. I gotta give it to Pete Davidson, um, Liza Koshi, I think. Um, she did pretty good. He did really good. Actually, I really like the voice of all the Transformers. Optimus Prime, obviously, that's a dub. No matter what. And then the Primals, they were pretty good. Um, would I see the next one? Yeah, sure, I'd see the next one. Overall, I'd give this movie a 6.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching all the way until the end, and I would appreciate it very much if you would consider booping the like button with your nose. I also like to read comments, so let me know what you thought of Rise of the Beast down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.